very good morning in today's class i would like to continue the yesterday's topic that is hypertension so in yesterday we have seen the definition of hypertension and what are all the types of hypertension we have seen and we have seen the classification of hypertension and we have seen the risk factors which were non modifiable as well as modifiable and we have seen the pathophysiology of hypertension and in this class i would like to continue with the clinical manifestations medical management and nursing management so coming to the clinical manifestations so you all you are you already so as we have discussed this hypertension it has become one of the major cause for the death so hypertension it is also called as the silent killer because it occurs without any kind of signs and symptoms so at early stage there are no clinical manifestation that means there are no signs and symptoms involved and in later stages you will have persistent headaches and person may feel fatigue dizziness palpitations and flushing epistaxis will be there means bleeding from the nose and blurred vision sometimes and decreased activity intolerance and you you might experience the angina nothing but just pain so these are all some of the clinical manifestations of this hypertension coming to the pharmacological interventions so we are mainly focusing on the anti hypertensive drugs here so anti hypertensive drugs are effective mainly in decreasing the cardiovascular morbidity and mortality that is associated with the hypertension anti hypertensives diuretics we are giving and alpha and beta adrenergic drugs and antagonists also we are giving we are also giving the alpha antagonists vasodilators calcium antagonists and angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors because as we have seen in the pathophysiology so here because of this angiotensin converting enzymes here the angiotensin 1 is coming into the angiotensin 2 and it is re releasing leading to the release of aldosterone and this angiotensin it is also having the high efficiency high efficiency to make the arteries and peripheral blood vessels to constrict so when it is the vasoconstricting construction is occurring there is increased peripheral resistance and it is further leading to the increased blood pressure or the angiotensin 2 it is responsible for the release of aldosterone which is leading to the again this aldosterone it is coming and acting on the kidney which is leading to sodium reabsorption and water retention again the ecf is increasing and it is leading into the blood pressure so here if you if you use this angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors you can cut cut down the pathophysiology so that the bp is maintained coming to the anti hypertensive drugs or diuretics in diuretics what we are doing whatever the extra cellular fluid that is retained in the body which is causing the increased afterload to the heart so all the extra cellular fluid is being drained out so that the bp the blood pressure the blood pressure in the body is maintained so in such a way and vasodilators so here by you are using this vasodilator means so the vasodilator when the peripheral resistance is occurring why because the construction of blood vessels is occurring so he, suppose if you take the blood vessel here if whenever you are take your uh, uh, bp is being increased during the peripheral resistance here the pathway for the blood is becoming narrow ultimately the pressure inside the blood vessel is increasing but when you take the vasodilator here the membrane of the blood vessel will decrease and pathway for the blood is increasing and the blood can flow easily through this gaps so this is the use of vasodilators here so mainly they are acting on the blood vessel and they are what they are doing they are, they are wide opening the constricted blood vessel so that the blood can flow and the peripheral resistance can be decreased so these are some of the pharmacological interventions coming to the nursing management so this is the main management here so in order to form a nursing diagnosis first of all you need to go for the assessment so you should assess the patient general health status and you should assess all the systems for the evidence of hypertension effort so which system is being disturbed here you should monitor the blood pressure under control conditions mainly to identify the abnormal changes that were occurring and you should assess the blood pressure in both arms so if you are whenever you are doing for the both arms whenever the value is accurate then you can form that the patient is in hypertension and you can form the diagnosis accordingly so what is the nursing diagnosis that can be given for this hypertension is mainly deficit knowledge regarding regarding the relation between the treatment regimen and control of disease process and nextly another nursing diagnosis that you can form is non compliance with therapeutic regimen related to side effects of prescribed therapy
So how you can write this nursing diagnosis means knowledge deficit regarding the relation between the treatment regimen and control of disease process as evidenced by patient paralyzation. You can write because it is another nursing diagnosis you have to write the three part statement as evidenced by patient verbalization. Non compliance with therapeutic regimen related to side effects of prescribed therapy as evidenced by observation. So this is the complete diagnosis that you can form. And you can also write fear and anxiety related to the disease condition as evidenced by patient's observation. In such a way also you can write one more uh, diagnosis you can write. And fluid imbalance related to the disease condition as evidenced by visualization you can write. So that is the third diagnosis you can form. So in such a way you can form the nursing diagnosis here. And next thing you can write is acute pain related to increased cerebral vascular pressure as evidenced by the reports of stabbing pain or patient verbalization or through pain skill. So how you can write acute pain related to increased cerebral vascular pressure which is evidenced by reports of thrombing pain or through visualization or through pain skill. So this is one of the nursing diagnosis that you can form during the hypertension. And another nursing diagnosis that you can form is activity intolerance related to Generalized weakness and imbalanced oxygen supply to the tissues as evidenced by patient verbalization or as evidenced by patient verbal report of fatigue, weakness, tiredness. So all these things you can include in the nursing diagnosis. Coming to the management, so mainly to prevent and manage the hypertension and restore the normal blood vessel and restore the normal elevated and restore the normal blood pressure mainly by modification of lifestyle changes and combination of and uh, through or in combination with the drug therapy you can do so what what is the management here mainly to prevent the morbidity mortality that is associated with the hypertension and to achieve and maintain arterial blood pressure that is below 140 by 90 mm of hg that is in mainly we are focusing on the lifestyle modification. So lifestyle modifications, they, these are widely used mainly to prevent the high, high blood pressures. And nextly, weight reduction. So whenever the people they are having the hypertension, so these people are likely to have more weight. That is 10% of more weight than the ideal weight. So with the reduction of as little as 10 pounds or 10 kgs of blood uh, body weight, you can lower the blood pressure. Nextly, sodium restriction. So here a moderate restriction of sodium intake. So we are restricting the sodium intake that is from 2.3 grams of sodium or 6 grams of salt. So what we, it will do means it will lower the blood pressure in the cases of stage 1. So during the stage 1 cases of hypertension, you have to mainly go for the sodium restriction. So during this time, may reduce the degree of potassium depletion and it often accompanies with the diuretic therapy. And nextly we have dietary fat modification. So modification of dietary intake as we are mainly discussing. Mainly you have to decrease the intake of saturated fat and increase the intake of polyunsaturated fat. So what it will do is it will decrease the blood pressure. The dietary modification we are mainly focusing on the dietary approaches of hypertension. So what we are doing we are making them to take the foods that are rich in fruits, vegetables, nuts and low fats. So these are mainly recommended to the clients who are in more structured and fat limited dietary intervention. Those who need more structured and dietary interventions, more fat limited dietary interventions. For those patients we are referring these type of dietary approaches. Coming to the nursing implementation, we are targeting, main, that mainly we are targeting the lifestyle modifications. Sodium intake, it should be less than, less than 2.5 grams or 6 grams of salt. And nextly, we are targeting the weight. Mainly, the BMI it should be like less than 25 kg per meter square. And waist circumference, mainly the target is to bring it down to less than 1 or 2 centimeters per man. And if it is for women, mainly less than 88 centimeters per woman. Nextly, alcohol consumption. So, you have to make them. So, you should target less or equal to 2 drinks per day. And dietary patterns. So, you should follow this dash diet nothing but hypertensive diet and nextly is smoking so the persons who are more smoking so these persons they should go for 
smoking cessation and they should stay in smoke free environment because the nicotine that is there in the smoke so it will always cause the raise of blood pressure in the body and ultimately it will result in the hypertension again nextly maintenance of the treatment regimen so we have to counsel them about the regimen you should explain the importance of drug and what is the necessary of taking the medication you should explain the client to so how to take the medication during their lifetime you should ask the client to bring all vials so the persons in the house they will be using some otcs or some remedies herbal remedies so you should ask the client to always bring all those types of herbal remedies or otcs that they use in the regular life to all the visits so you can know what kind of treatment that is going on to them and you should consider alternative medication and you should schedule and trigger pill taking according to the daily activity so before meals or before the uh, before brushing their teeth and actually you should consider the alternative medication you should schedule them and you should trigger the pill taking according to the daily activity so after meals they should take or before meals they should take you should explain them in a clear manner and actually you should use beepers or reminder calls or phone reminders or computer reminders to make them to take the medication in correct time in correct dose and the convenience of care should be provided mainly at the work places and you should take bp and talk to the persons nextly you should encourage the patients to do go for the self blood pressure monitoring with regular and review and reinforcement and nextly involve family members and family whenever you are involving them it will help the medication regimen so whenever these persons when the client is forgetting these family members can remind them and they can take the medication at a correct time in a correct dose nextly during the follow up what what we should do is during the follow up for every 6 to 12 months they should do the necessary blood work blood pressure measurement and weight they have to go they they have to inquire regarding the general health status regarding the side effects and treatment problem so you should ask them and you should reinforce or advise normal formula and you should reinforce or even you can re advise them regarding the non pharmacological measures mainly to control the blood pressure such as meditating taking yoga or all those things nextly annual test for urine and nextly they have to go for urine test that is they have to check annually for protein urea and with stage 2 or complicated hypertension the client require more frequent follow up if it is stage 1 the simple steps you can follow if it is stage 2 you have to come more often to the hospital so you should have knowledge you should have knowledge at the minimum so pathophysiology of hypertension you should know maximizing the opportunities for detection of the hypertension facilitating diagnosis assessing and monitoring the client with hypertension providing appropriate client and family education and lastly you should do education recommendation so here the nurses who are working with the adults with hypertension they must have appropriate knowledge and the skills that they acquired they should have some basic principles they should have some basic knowledge whenever they are giving the nursing education so ongoing professional development and opportunities and orientation to new workplace has to be given so what type of skills this nursing personnel should need is they should have minimum knowledge of pathology of hypertension when they know the pathology of hypertension when any person is asking or when any patient is asking they can explain them and they should maximize the opportunities for detection so you should identify when a person is seeing you some signs and symptoms you should go for immediate physical examination and assessment and you can you should be able to diagnose you should at least you should be able to detect the problem and you should whatever the thing that you are doing it should be always helpful in facilitating the diagnosis you should assess the monitor and the monitor clients with hypertension you should provide appropriate client or family education because your education matters a lot whenever they are going home because you won't take care of the uh, client when they are in at home the family members has to take care and the family education it must be in a clear and concise manner and you should support them in mainly in lifestyle changes you should promote the empowerment of individual and documentation and communication with the client and the other members of healthcare system so these are some of the minimum knowledge that are required so with this i would like to end the session here hope you understood these are all the nursing management and these are all some of the nursing diagnosis that you can use so knowledge deficit regarding the relation between the treatment regimen and control of disease process as evidenced by patient verbalization so this is one of the diagnosis nextly 
non compliance with treat therapeutic regimen related to the side effects of prescribed therapy as evidenced by observing the patient or as evidenced by fear and anxiety in the patient or as evidenced by confusedness in the patient so you can write everything and nextly acute pain and nextly we have acute pain related to increased cerebral vascular pressure as evidenced by the reporting of throbbing pain in the head region or as evidenced by the visualization pain visualization scale so you can write in such a way and fear and anxiety related to the disease condition as evidenced by patient verbalization as evidenced by observation so all these are some of the things that you can write in your examination most probably this question will come for short answers hope you understood if you like the content please like share and subscribe and if you have any queries please let me know i'll try to explain you again and again thank you so much try to take the notes so it will help you a lot during your studies thank you so much thanks for watching